um, staff, guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we're going to turn and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, third item is approval of the agenda. Second. Okay, we have a first and second. Mayor, Any discussion? We need to remove items 12C, F, and G from the agenda, please. Okay, so that will be C, F, and G. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. So we're not uh, doing the budget. I mean, we we will have that on on the uh, for the first reading on June second. I'm sorry, first first reading on June second. Second is it June first? Uh, it is first. It is. I noticed that in your email. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. First, that was easy for me. First okay. reading on June 1st. Okay. Second reading on June 15th, and the public hearing on June 15th as well. Okay. I apologize for the confusion on the date. That's okay. Um, okay. And so let me ask: If we are striking C, wouldn't we need to strike um, D? No, no, that's a new one. Okay. Why are we striking C? The request of the developer, we're waiting on the traffic study from them. That was part of the motion when it was approved through the Planning Commission. Okay. okay, and I'm thinking there's one more with that. So was it C and D? Okay. Was that the one you were referring to? Um, no, Mayor. The, the the one the two I was referring to, twelve A and B. A and B. Okay. The the engineer on that project spoke with the city's engineer this evening, around five p.m. and requested that that be deferred. Um, obviously, that's the pleasure of the board whether or not they chose to defer. But that was the request. Um, as it relates to item twelve C. The question there was when that passed the planning commission, it was passed um, with the stipulation that a traffic plan be provided or was passed contingent upon a traffic plan. That traffic plan has not yet been submitted. So rather than move forward without that, the discussion was to remove it simply in absence of the traffic plan. So. Okay. So in A and B, they've asked to defer it. We do not have to defer it. We can vote on it as it is. Um, so any input from the board? I would like to go ahead and leave it on for tonight. Okay. We have citizens who've come out regarding this issue. It, it was asked to be put on this agenda originally and it's here, so. <clears throat> okay, is there any other thoughts? Okay. So with the changes that we have to um, strike C, F, and G, um, any other additions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, public hearing, and that was strike, so. No, no, that wasn't. Okay. 11C, gotcha. Okay, so here we go. Um, the public hearing, which is item 11C, and if you would like to go ahead um, and read the prefix just for. 
Second and final reading of ordinance number 2017-08, an ordinance to change the zoning of certain property in the city of Fairview, Tennessee, located off Fairview Boulevard, owned by Donald M. Cunningham and Rosemary Cunningham Revocable Living Trust, as shown on Williamson County Tax Map 23, parcel 44.01, from RM12 to R20. Okay, at this time, if there's any citizens here to speak on the matter, um, you may come up to the podium at this time. Okay, since nobody is um, coming up, besides Mr. Butler, no. Okay, then we will close the public hearing and move on to um, item five, citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens? Okay. <clears throat> Item six, awards and recognition. No. Okay, thank you. Item seven, public announcements. Anything exciting going on in the community that we need to bring up? I think everybody's in ball and end of the year stuff, so. Okay, staff comments, and we'll go ahead. Mayor, I have a couple of just updates. Mr. Hall has gone home sick for the day, so he's unavailable to that. He left earlier this morning. He's had an ongoing illness for some time. Uh, Keith uh, Paisley and Parts also went home sick today. Um, Brandy didn't make it back today, but it is, it's um, a lot, several that have been going through. I would like to give you just a quick update. Um, regarding um, Keith and the parks, part of the public works we talked about um, resurfacing for the year. Keith and I met earlier today to get that list together. We have a list of seven streets. We have someone coming in next week to give us an estimate on getting all of those streets paved. I will tell you that King Road um, is, on those, is on that list. We know that that's been up for some time, so we need to take, make sure that we get that. Um, Henry Drive. As you get to the dead end of King Road, turn right on Henry Drive, there's been some discussion of that. I drove it today and it certainly needs to be resurfaced. They're giving an estimate on that as well. Um, the, the other road of any length would be on Horn Tavern Road between Bain Road, um, I guess eastbound or northbound toward Highway or Interstate 40 um, on Horn Tavern. That one is the longest one, and then there's one small subdivision in there that has a, a not a surface layer, it just has a construction layer um, for a small neighborhood. Those are the primary streets that we're looking to have resurfaced. We hope to have that estimate by the end of next week, certainly have that estimate and those streets included in your proposed budget so we can move forward with that. Um, there are available funds to have those streets done. We just want to make sure that we manage that budget in a way that we can move forward with those resurfacing projects. Um, but that's the current list. We'll probably have a few small ones depending on availability of any additional funds. Okay. Um, in addition to that, um, some of those funds being available um, through the, um, the law that was just passed <coughs> in the legislature regarding um, the gas tax, there's an additional amount of money that will come to the city of Fairview um, over the next year. That anticipated amount is $48,000. So in addition to the state street aid, we expect to have $48,000 come in during the budget year for that in fiscal 17, 18, and then 18, 19, and 19, 20, there's an, est an estimated additional $22,000 for each of those years. So we expect that we'll have that 48,000 in addition to the currently available state street aid money. And when we can get that math together and make sure we'll include it with the proposed resurfacing that, yeah. that we have. Um, so that, that's kind of a resurfacing update from, from Keith. And then Kristen's out as well. She had something previously, but I want to make sure you knew where we were on the paving as we go forward. I know that's been a question. So okay. That's, that's those three departments reports. Okay, great. Uh, Ms. Johnson, do you have anything? Okay. Uh, Mr. Darting. Okay. From the back, any of our chiefs? Feel free to join us anytime. <laughs> Okay, well, if that's it, then we will move on. <clears throat> Item 9, approval of the minutes. Move to approve. Second. We have a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. And just for clarification, we didn't need to individually vote. They're all grouped as A, B, and C. What do y'all think? Um, They're not on the consent agenda. Correct. Okay. Okay, so um, let's redo that. We'll start with A. Move to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item um, 9B. Move to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 9C. Move to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. That would have been easy and a consent. <laughs> but, okay, we'll move on. Uh, 11, old business. Second and final reading of ordinance number 2017-04. An ordinance to change the zoning of certain property in the city of Fairview, Tennessee, located off Old Nashville Road, owned by Jennifer Rose Buford, Rita Olivia Kidder, and James Ricky Jones, as shown on Williamson <coughs> County Tax Map 42, Parcel 74, from RS40 to RS15, Residential PUD. Okay. Um, Mr. Mangrum, if you want to join us. Welcome back. If you want to give us a scenario of what you've done and the changes, I know you've presented something. Yes, we sent an email to the city planner, uh, I believe on Tuesday, that um, we added the, the trees behind all the houses uh, and the uh, and that 20 foot uh, strip. Sorry, my mind just went totally blank on me. Um, and we also added uh, a note on the plat that said all of the houses would be, uh, exterior would be masonry products, either when we say that, we're brick, stone, or, or hardy board. So it looks, um, it looks like you um, are gonna put landscaping or trees all the way around the entrance all around uh, both sides of the road back of the property sides of the property so it should be <coughs> kind of exclude or hidden i guess um, yeah, we what we done we took the we mimicked the the treescape the way they're supposed to be laid out i think the trees are about 40 foot apart uh, with you know mature trees they'll end up touching one another eventually Okay. Did anybody have any other questions for Mr. Mangrum? And on this site plan, it, it actually has the sidewalk on the on Old Nashville Road as well? Yes, the one we had a couple of weeks ago showed that as well. Okay. The only change from the one we presented two weeks ago and this one is, is the trees around the uh, perimeter uh, and the note for the hardy, for the masonry. Exterior masonry. And Mr. Potter, did we check on the ability of the board to make that enforceable? Okay, any other um, comments or questions? Okay. 
Okay, do I have a motion? I move to approve the site plan as presented to include the I believe when it went through the Planning Commission, it was still just staff comments. Was that right? What an engineering report. I know there was an approval at the Planning Commission that was contingent upon the staff comments, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah with the February 13, 2017 city staff report. So my motion is to approve the site plan as presented tonight um, with the February 2013, excuse me, February 13, 2017 city staff report. Okay, so we got a first. Do we have a second? I think the city manager is wanting to oh, comment. Oh, go ahead. Just, just to clarify, the, the motion would be approve the zoning and not the site plan. Well, that was part of the discussion. Once you um, approve the zoning, whatever's presented is, is what sticks. Okay, I'm just making sure we're, I'm just making. Well, okay, let, let me, you mean to restate the motion and may, maybe state it more eloquently, or attempt to at least. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning request contingent on the site plan that was presented tonight and the February 2013 excuse me, February 13, 2017, city staff report. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, that's my motion. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a first and second. Any more discussion? How long will it take to for these trees to grow up where they're kind of touching and really blocking that area off? I mean, I don't have the approved tree list that the, that the city has, so I, I don't know if any of those trees are what they would consider fast growing trees or if they're gonna be native hardwoods. If, you know, if there's some fast growing trees, it, it wouldn't take it but a handful of years and they would get pretty close to one another. But, you know, if they're oak trees of any variety, I mean, it'll be quite some time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Commissioner Rainey, I believe you have some experience on the tree board. Well, I was kind of surprised that you don't have the approved tree list, the one that I've been in your, in your packet that you've got, and it's on the website when you have had access to that by now. I, I don't know that I need it. If I agree to plant them, and as long as it's an approved tree, I'll plant any of the trees that's on there. It, it doesn't make me any difference. Well, he's right. Some of the trees on the tree list will take a long time to grow together to form any kind of privacy. Some will not. I'm not sure that Mike Berkeley would, uh, Mike's a stickler, so. And he will also have to look at where they are, how they're being planted. And I can almost bet that he's going to suggest that you plant hardwoods, natives. Like I said, we just mimic the streetscape. I mean, that's that's what the streetscape requires: a tree every 40 feet. So that's we just mimic that. Does the landscape plan not have to be approved before it comes to? Does that not have to be approved before it gets this far? As of right now, um, for residential, no. Um, that's something that we have been discussing that we would like to change, that all residential would have to come just like commercial. But um, as of right now, it's just for um, commercial development that has to go in front of the tree board. But that is something in the last couple meetings the tree board has discussed that we would like to see. I would think that if you had a business license to, to build, that you would be a commercial entity. Yeah, and that was the ar argument of, but it, the way it's worded, it um, describes a commercial development. 
So um, that's something, that just another loophole that we kind of um, decided that we need to try to close. Because as of right now, a residential um, doesn't have to go in front of the tree board. So there's nothing to, to hold Mr. Mungram to planning any of this? Um, actually, I mean, the city would have a responsibility to go through and make sure before they released um, any of the COs to make sure the subdivision, but there's nothing to maintain, like say some of the conversations that we have on the tree board. If something dies, you know, you know who's going to replace it kind of stuff. Um, they have to go by the list, um, the approved trees, but there's not that enforcement step. Well, right, but my question is, so if, if he's not required to have a landscape plan, then there's nothing to hold him to even plant this. It is in this scenario because it's a PUD and it's part of that, it's part of your rezoning. I believe once we, if based upon Commissioner Crutcher's motion, we're approving the rezoning based subject on. to this plan. So yes, he's going to be held to planting those trees there. The type of tree I think is going to be dependent upon our species the list. list. The so it'll list. be a tree of this size coming from that approved list. But yes, he would have to plant these because he's going to be subject to this plan. I had a question. It's um, go um, ahead. This is marked private road. Is this going to continue to be a private road that goes in, or is it going to be going over not, to the city? I, I don't know. I don't see. I don't have what you're looking at. I did look at it the other day, and I must have missed that. It will not be. It will not be a private road. It'll be a public road. Okay. I'm looking at across on the road across from house 21 it still it has it listed as private road it does that must be something that that, that must be something the engineer stuck on there on accident but no it's it's intended for a public street And the other question, I don't know that you can answer uh, this, or maybe you can, um, with the concern of Nashville Road being so narrow, um, is, there, is there plenty of room for a bus to actually go into the subdivision and um, turn back around? Because we're already, you're already gonna have an issue with you know, the road being narrow. Where this particular piece of property is, it's, it's on a straight stretch of the road. The only issue that I can see is there is a cluster of, I haven't counted them, it's five or six trees, and they're right on the edge of the street. Uh, and they're probably, they're gonna line up pretty close to where our entrance is, so we're probably gonna lose them anyway. Um, but I'll be glad to take that cluster of trees out for visibility reasons. You mean you're saying existing trees that might? Yeah, there's five or six, and they're right on the edge of the street. So they, they should have been gone years ago. And when you start this subdivision, are you going to build the entire road all at once that goes in? It will be in phases like we discussed at the last meeting, <clears throat> but it would go in the main entrance take a right mm -hmm. and would go to get the 20 lots it would be on that street on the right side so we'd probably end up where the street actually turns and goes back to make the loop would end up with a cul-de-sac right there temporarily but if we can get sewer taps we plan on doing it all and and being gone from there within two and a half year, two and a half years from the time we break ground well my concern was if you don't have that full loop going, how would we go make it so a bus could turn around, fire vehicle could turn around? So you're saying it'll be a cul-de-sac? Yes, we'll put a temporary cul-de-sac in there, and we'll, we can show that on our construction drawings when we go back to planning commission. When we would, at that point, we would show phase lines.
And just for just for clarification, there is a little strip that you can see a 25 foot uh, conservation buffer. There's no trees in that because that is. I, I wish my engineer here was here to clarify that, but that's supposed to be undisturbed as possible, I'm assuming. Uh, it's not a stream. We, we have had somebody out to check on that, um, but he, he does have that labeled and is not showing the trees in that area. And I think that's pretty much the, the natural drainage way. So you wouldn't want trees in those anyway to uh, constrict the natural flow of the water that's going through there at the present time. And where is this? Uh, it's towards the back. It's it's where the offset is. Uh, right behind 12 and 13. Right okay, through here. Thank you. Yes, behind 12 and 13, lot 12 and 13 in between 31 and 32. Is it a dry creek or a dry wash? that goes into Brush Creek? It's just a big drainage ditch there now. It's, like I said, we had, uh, we had somebody check that out to make sure there was not a blue line stream or anything like that. So it wasn't, it does feed in to Brush Creek. That's where it eventually goes. All the drainage coming from way upside of this ends up in Brush Creek. Mr. Mangrell, who checked it out? Who did the, the checking of the stream? My engineer hired uh, someone. I, I don't know. He, he handled all of that. Of course, when we when we turn in our stuff to TDEC, they they also double check that as well. So, so which y'all could provide us with some kind of letter saying that it was um, checked or approval if he had somebody go check it yes it hasn't been approved by tdec yet correct the water and sewer no, no. the conservation buffer we said they would come check it as well, well that's when we turn in our we have to turn in, turn in for uh, land disturbance mm -hmm. uh, and water and sewer all that goes to the state for their approval and at the land disturbance part the swift permit all of that will be checked then. Correct. So if, if for some reason it turned out it was something else, then TDEC would shut you down on that area, correct? In that area, that would be a possibility. Okay, and those um, front lots that actually, are they going to go back? I know we talked about this. They're facing the road. Is that? Um, yeah, lots 1, 2, 3, 22, and 23 face Old Nashville with rear entry garages. Okay. And Mayor, that is noted on the plans. So yeah, I, I remembered it even from the meeting, but I just wanted to verbally talk about it. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Mayor, if I could just yes. briefly, I just want to say that Mr. Mangrum has come several times and has presented um, this proposal to the board. There's been multiple changes made. Uh, he has agreed to do the landscape buffer, which I think is, is beneficial to the existing uh, individuals that live around this property. This uh, All of these homes will be masonry finish or out exteriors rather uh, it should be a, a good quality product it's 39 lots i know there's concerns about old nashville road i would hope that a 39 lot subdivision won't have that big of an impact on that street i think there's going to have to ultimately be improvements made to that road down the down the stretch anyway maybe this will expedite that process um, there's certainly a shortage of housing in fairview and anybody tells you there's not they're wrong uh, this is again this is not a huge subdivision but it does provide some much needed much needed homes uh, here in fairview so the zoning that he's requesting is is medium density uh, the land use map is consistent with our land use map for that area um, so that's the reasons that i have i have moved to approve this subdivision okay thank you no other comments. We'll go into a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? No. No. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, that will take us to um, 11B. Um, second and final reading of ordinance number 2017-5. An ordinance to amend City of Fairview, Tennessee Municipal Code, Title 7, Chapter 5, Section 7-501 through 7-514, Fireworks. Move to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah, Mayor, I, I had, we've talked about this before. I, I still have the same concerns that I, I kind of had before on this, um, and I, I won't go into a long spill about that again. I just, <clears throat> I, I keep getting hung up on this. You can sell fireworks, but this group of people can't, um, and I haven't been able to get, get rid of that um, that feeling. Um, last, last meeting, I requested a... Um, a sunset clause we put into place and, and that wasn't uh, the board didn't really go with that um, and realistically I'm kind of glad they didn't because I again I still have that problem with um, this group of, of people can sell in this in Fairview and this group can't um, I think if we were to do this in other areas um, it would be a major problem and uh, I am torn because of, of I understand Commissioner Crutcher's reasoning for wanting to do this uh, to raise money for uh, the baseball teams, football teams, and, and different uh, nonprofits in, in the area. Um, and so I'm not obviously I'm not against that. Um, I, I just I can't get over the this group can and this group can't. Um, and so that's kind of my feelings on it. But I just wanted to make that clear um, so that people would know why I was I was voting against this uh, tonight. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. It, to, for me, it's, it's definitely not about this group can or this group can. It's, it's opening it up to all nonprofits. I mean, so it's, it's identifying a, a large group of individuals within, you know, within the city of Fairview that can, that can participate in this. Every year we have, I mean, there's a lot of nonprofits that exist that we may not realize, whether it's the band boosters or the football boosters or the softball or basketball or uh, you name it. There's, there's tons of nonprofits that exist that each year are trying to compete um, for money. And there's only, you know, limited resources. In Fairview, we're not, um, we don't have a whole lot of commercial business here. I mean, then what we do, by all means, they are great about uh, contributing to these causes, and they do it each and every year. But I thought this would be a great way, instead of having, you know, these various groups standing out here at the red light with buckets, you know, doing a road stop, so to speak, trying to raise money, that this would be a good way for them to have an annual fundraiser and maybe uh, take some of the the strain of the of the local businesses in terms of having to donate to all groups uh, they may be able to make up some of that money through this through this option so that was the reason for me doing it I understand your concern but I don't think that it's it's just limiting it as narrowly as what you may think uh, is my only comment okay mayor yes my only concern is that Nonprofits will have to, I'm assuming, still abide by all the storage rules, all the requirements for what has to be done with the fireworks. So let's say that a ball team has the connections to hire, you know, John's fireworks from wherever to come in and set up a tent, and, and John's fireworks says we'll give you 10% of the profit. Are we, is that something that we, is going to be okay, or is it going to have to be the ball team itself that apply? I mean, how, how do we, or are we worried about that? Well, I think that's a good question. Um, I think you would almost have to run it through the nonprofit. They would have to have their 50, um, you know, um, 
one. 501c3. Right, yeah, and they can you. do that yeah. even if they if they if they contract with a big fireworks company, they can still do that. Yeah, but I mean, I think when it goes under through them, then it's still. I mean, yeah, there might be a vendor that you know makes money off of it, but I think the the purpose is probably um, the nonprofit uh, will benefit from it. <laughs> Um, but we could restrict it. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Again, I, I understand the concern. The way that I read the ordinance, it's drafted to, that the nonprofit would actually have to be the applicant for the permit, uh, both at um, the city level and at the state level, uh, for that matter, the way I understand it. I don't think that it would be beneficial for any nonprofit that's trying to raise money to get into a contractual relationship with some big vendor like that just to take a percentage and I think the idea behind this is is there's such a huge markup in fireworks I mean, the idea is, is you purchase you a, you know a, a lot of fireworks you set you up a tent you sell them and you make as much money as you can make in terms of a fundraiser so what would stop a nonprofit from from entering into that contractual relationship I don't know that anything in this ordinance would stop them from doing that but I don't think it would just, it wouldn't make good business sense to do that. Um, so I don't, I don't really have that concern because I just don't think, I don't think that's what's going to happen. Go ahead, Commissioner Burks. I guess it's an issue of subcontracting. It's really what we're talking about. Are they going to get the application and subcontract it out to Big Daddy's Fireworks or somebody? Um, would the ordinance allow that? Attorney Potter. I guess the idea really is what are we trying to accomplish? I guess two things, to be able to sell fireworks in Fairview to our citizens so we're not spending our money in another county, and we're keeping that money here. And number two, we're trying to help nonprofits raise funds. Number two is a very good goal. Number one, it's helpful, but number two, that's really what we're after, we're trying to raise money for these nonprofits so they can continue the mission that they have. And honestly, I don't care how they do it. If they want to subcontract with someone and make 50% of the profit, great. That's 50% more than they had before. If they want to go buy all the fireworks themselves, sell it, and keep all the profit, even better. I just want to help these nonprofits. I think this is a, a novel way of doing it. Instead of, again, people going and having to knock on doors, try to sell candy bars, and do these little things here and there. They can try to get a big lick, especially some of our ball teams and stuff. It's kind of when they need it is during the summer particularly. So I don't really care how they do it as long as they can raise those funds. Um, Commissioner um, Lucas, I actually had the same issues when it came up about could we, you know, tell one group not. Um, but once our attorney researched it and said there was nothing stopping us, then I kind of came over the hump and just decided that for me, there is such a limited way for these nonprofits. And like the vice mayor says, they're all competing for the same, you know, pot of money. And we are opening it up for all nonprofits. So, um, but I, you know, I do understand your thought process and, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, I get it. Okay, if we have no more discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, motion carries. That will bring us to item C, um, second and final reading of ordinance number 2017-8.
An ordinance to change the zoning of certain property in the city of Fairview, Tennessee, located off Fairview Boulevard, owned by Donald M. Cunningham and Rosemary Cunningham Revocable Living Trust, as shown on Williamson County Tax Map 23, parcel 44.01, from RM12 to R20. Move to approve. Second. Okay, got a first and second. Any discussion? Is there somebody here representing? Okay. Okay, if there's no questions, I'll go for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to new business. 12A, a res resolution 07-17, a resolution to annex certain territory upon written consent of the owners and to incorporate the same within the boundaries of the city of Fairview, tax map 42, parcel 78, 87.71 acres, 78.01, 15 acres, uh, 79, 13 acres, and 97.01, 16.04 acres, total of 131.75 acres, owner Jennifer Rose Buford and Rita Kidder. Mayor, if, we, if I could apologize if I could correct you that last was 79.01 okay for 16.04 acres you said 97.01 okay to clear on the record a little dyslexia I guess sounds good any um body here rep I guess no one's here representing as you said earlier so any discussion we'll open it up Okay, and so there was no word really why they weren't coming. Yeah. We have an ordinance, just a reminder that anybody with business before the city has to be here for this to be considered. Mm -hmm. So you can't consider this tonight. Okay. Well, we probably should have discussed that during the um, uh, comments on whether to leave it on the agenda or not, you know. Um, Any, would you like to advise us? Because I know Commissioner Burke said something that he wanted to leave it on because there were citizens here mm -hmm. and um, he wanted to discuss. Can we not discuss it? Mr. Potter, is there any reason we can't discuss it? Even if we don't take action on it? Uh, I'm, not aware, I'm not aware of the ordinance that's been referred to, but I would not imagine that it would prevent you from discussing it. Public meeting. People are present, but it sounds like the existing ordinance that I'm not <coughs> prohibits action being taken. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Parr, it's very hard for me to hear you. Well, I'm sorry, I, I was answering Commissioner Burks, and he asked, Is there any prohibition on us discussing it? I've not read this particular ordinance that's been brought to my attention tonight, but I cannot imagine that it would prevent you from discussing the matter. Uh, you certainly are able to discuss any business before the city if you're in a public hearing like this and it's something that's on the agenda so but without reading the ordinance I could not tell you if you can take action on it or not yeah well I don't doubt it I mean no one's going to know better than Brandy as far as whether or not there's you know the ordinance I just <clears throat> we left it on there because it was discussed during agenda time so just trying to understand the um, limitations Was there any particular, did they notify us they weren't going to be here? Or did they? We were notified late this afternoon by, through our engineer. Did they give a particular reason why? 
I spoke with Mr. Owen, and he stated that their engineer notified him that they did not want to be, or they requested to be deferred. Uh, beyond that, he did not explain any specific reason as to why. We did not speak with them directly. Second hand. So it would also be appropriate for us to make a motion to defer or not make a motion to defer? Yeah, I mean, we almost have to now. I mean, we could have removed it from the agenda, but um, now that it's in there and we approved it with it in there, we're going to have to make a motion to defer. And any discussion, I guess, when the motion's made, we can discuss, you know. Um, can we make a motion not to defer it? I don't know why well, you I'm couldn't. Not, I'm not. You could make a motion not to defer it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what that accomplishes. Um, that leaves it on the agenda and then you, you cannot take action on it. And I think taking action would probably mean action as to the merits of the request. Please repeat that, the last sentence. I said I think taking no action on it means not taking action on the merits of the request. That would be my thought. And the, mer the merits of the request are the, uh, the resolution for annexation itself. So I don't think you could, in light of the ordinance that the city recorder has brought to our attention and reminded us of tonight, I'm not sure that we could vote one way or the other on what the merits of the action item is. So you either defer it um, or you remove it from the agenda. And I think because the way we approved the agenda with it on there, mm -hmm. we have no choice but to defer it or it stays on the agenda and then we, we don't move on. <laughs> I move to defer items 12A and 12B. Okay, got a, a motion to defer. Okay. Okay, first and second. Any discussion? Well, I would apologize to any of our citizens who came out or at home watching this on TV based upon this being on the agenda. Um, I know there's a lot of concern about this item and a lot of interest, and uh, I apologize. Your time was wasted. So just to add another question in, I understood what you were saying to Commissioner Rainey, but in any scenario, we have a motion to defer. Either you vote to defer it, and you get you know, the two-thirds vote, what happens if you got votes saying no? I mean, it would die right there, right? I mean, it, again, just out of curiosity, this raised a question that, you know. Right, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sort of a chicken and egg thing. Mm -hmm. um, we have an item on the agenda that we have an ordinance that says we cannot take action on, so do we uh, move it to another meeting, or do we just not put it on a subsequent agenda? I mean, but deferring it, I think, by implication, means it's going to be on a, on the agenda at a later date. You just so let me understand. So if we if we had made a motion not to defer, it would not have been on another agenda. It, it's some, you know, it's. Um, it, it would appear to me, based on what we've just heard, that if the ordinance states if the participant or representative is not here, then no action can be taken mm. and it's deferred, then you, the ordinance would, would take effect. In other words, if it's on the agenda, there's no one here to hear it, then it would be deferred without any action from any, any, any board. You simply would not have the ability to vote on it, it's deferred automatically by virtue of the passage of the ordinance and not a vote to defer the specific item. Um, 
with that in the in the, an abundance of caution given the fact that I haven't seen that ordinance and we we want to make sure we get it right as a precaution I would probably entertain the motion to defer well and can we um, take a recess and have our attorney um, have the city recorder um, pull up the ordinance and have our attorney to look over it for we um, know exactly what we're doing that's that's your executive prerogative as a mayor if you wish to have a recess then you can have one any uh, thoughts on um, taking a recess? Move for a recess. Okay. About a first and second. We're going to take a um, five-minute recess, maybe. The, there's a motion on the floor to defer. Was there a second? Um, yes. Yes. So okay. we have to take action on that before. No, we, I, okay. I would just, I would just curious as when we come back into session, that motion will still be on the floor. Uh huh. It will. Yes. Okay. <clears throat>
Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, call the meeting back to order. Sorry it took us a little longer than what we anticipated, but um, we are going to need some more time to research that, and I think the your recommendation is to go ahead and defer it and my, my recommendation uh, we were unable to locate the ordinance and uh, but I think with the city recorder's historical knowledge she believes it exists we just don't know what keyword to plug in and find it uh, it might not exist but we think that it could exist but what's more my advice would be to the Board of Commissioners to defer it uh, to the next meeting for a couple of reasons. I think that is erring on the side of caution. Also, the, the owners did request it to be deferred. I think that should be considered somewhat. Um, and I think that uh, if, if, there is a, if there is an ordinance in existence that says you cannot take action in the absence of an owner, being present and we do take action and it's going to be more problematic so my, my request is that it be deferred I would I do think that we ought to find whatever piece of legislation this is and and study it and consider amending it or repealing it depending on the language in in, in the ordinance but that would be my request tonight okay thank you so we had a um, First with um, Vice Mayor and then a second with um, Commissioner Lucas. So with no other discussion, does anybody have any? We'll go ahead and move to defer it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and we'll have to do the same because that was A, and the then was for A and B. A and B. So, but we didn't include A and B, did we? Yeah. Okay. Next case, we move on to um, D. Ordinance number 2017-11. An ordinance to amend the city of Fairview zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 42 parcel 12 consisting of 0.89 acres located at 7309 Cox Pike from a RS 40 low density residential zoning district to a R 20 medium density residential zoning district. Okay. Are we, um, do I have a um, motion? A Is motion. The, are the people here present? Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item. E, ordinance number 2017-12. An ordinance to amend the City of Fairview zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 42, parcel 13, consisting of 1.41 acres located at 7307 Cox Pike from a RS40 low density residential zoning district to a R20 medium density residential zoning district. Move to approve. Second. Got a first and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and that'll bring us to um, 13 city managers items for discussion. Mayor, members of the board, two things for you tonight. Um, the first is there was a discussion to request a executive session. At the end of this meeting, I anticipate the executive session would take 20 minutes. Um, simply for um, information regarding uh, pending or potential litigation. There will be no action to take by the board based on that after the meeting, simply an update from where we are from uh, legal on, on two legal matters. Uh, the next thing I have before you tonight, and, and we'll work on the date of this, um, and I apologize for, for the date that I got wrong um, earlier, 
But as you know, and we've discussed, we, we've made some significant changes with leadership in departments and city personnel over the last several months. And um, we're, some, we're, we're pretty proud of that for the team that we think we put together to help grow the community uh, long term. With that, um, given the schedules of some of the things that were discussed tonight, we would um, likely schedule an open house on uh, June 15, which would be the second meeting in June. Um, we'll get a schedule out. We'll, we'll likely try to start that at 530, but we want to invite the public to kind of enjoy an, a department head open house so that the public can come in and kind of meet the new people who are, are in these departments in the city. Again, uh, if you look at what's taken place just recently, and I say recently, the last nine months, as I described in the, um, the email that I sent out today, you have a still somewhat new to the area city manager, a new fire chief, a new police chief, a new assistant police chief, a new city attorney, a new city planner, and now three relatively new board members over, over the change that's done. That's a wholesale change for any city anywhere, particularly a city Fairview size. Um, but what I do hear and get a sense of in the community is it's very much welcomed. And we want the community to meet those new employees, to see the people who are helping run the city day to day and, and let them understand that we are as excited about our future as we believe they are. So as we get that information and put that, I think that would be an excellent opportunity um, to, to kind of gauge the interest from where we are. Also, that would give us opportunity to, um, at least as a precursor to the 4th of July event that will be coming on, and make sure we can get those things advertised and follow up. So we're excited as a staff where the city's going. I have every confidence in the world um, for our department heads as we go forward, and we just want to share that excitement with the community and let them know that we are very much look forward to, to, growing, to growing the new Fairview. So beyond that, that's all I have for you tonight. Okay. Thank you. And the city attorney? Mayor, I don't have any comments tonight. Thank you. Okay. And I just I had a comment for you. Could you, like, not only when we find that ordinance, um, if you can make some kind of determination on whether or not the item could be discussed um, still, because that question came about, you know, um, and then we can know, okay, if we have to have them present, and then can, can we continue with the discussion if they are. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, Commissioner Rainey. No comments tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. And um, Commissioner Lucas. Yeah, I just wanted to say congratulations to all of our uh, Fairview students that are uh, either graduating or being promoted. Um, on that and this uh, next season that they're getting ready to go into. Also, on a, on a personal note, a lot of citizens uh, reached out to me. My daughter, uh, who's 13, has uh, a heart condition. I won't go into a long song and dance about it called SVT. Um, she had a spell the other day uh, and was uh, rushed to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Um, Fairview's finest came out. They did a, a great job. and. and and took care of my little girl and uh, she will be having a heart procedure tomorrow uh, at the hospital uh, so if you would just uh, keep her in your thoughts and your prayers tomorrow and uh, that's all I have the nightmare thank you and Commissioner Burks I'd also like to say congratulations to all of our graduating seniors y'all worked very hard and you deserve to enjoy your time and move on to your next adventure also, I'd like to say I had the pleasure of being out at Westwood for the talent shows. And if you were there, I know you enjoyed it like I did. And we have some extremely talented third graders for sure. Okay. And Vice Mayor Gretcher. Nothing to nightmare. Thank you. Okay. Well, I was uh, there for a lot of them and missed that one. But I did see a nice tape of... Um, Commissioner Burke's son and some of the third graders and they did an awesome job so and a lot of great kids um, brave kids you know that's the hard stuff to get in front of your peers and perform and so a lot of brave kids went out and did that um, I also um, you know apologized for the break um, and it took longer than my five minutes anticipated um, but I, I do think this is all important part of the process um, just as we as a board learn to function and just 
going from this is how we've always done it, but you know, are we doing it right and everything coming together. So I appreciate the patience and I apologize um, once again. Also, congratulations to all the seniors in our community and um, I'm very proud of all your accomplishments and look forward to the bright futures um, of these students. So with that being said, I would like a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a first and second, and we will be adjourned.